mention that to, um, as, 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 as part of this. Um, the, um, um, do I have time to talk a little bit about the failures of the Arab Spring? Exactly. Yeah, okay, <laughs> great. Okay, I'll start with Yemen. Um, in Yemen, uh, you had a broad-based, nonviolent pro-democracy movement uh, that got literally millions of people in the streets. Um, uh, it was an uprising against the U.S.-backed authoritarian government of um, Ali Abdullah Saleh. And this is quite remarkable because Yemen is the poorest country in the Arab world, uh, one of the poorest in the world, period. Um, low levels of illiteracy. This is not, you know, a Facebook <laughs> revolution. <laughs> I mean, these are, um, I mean, uh, yeah, the, the, I mean, this was, um, by, by a lot of the standard you know, measures, you know, this is one of the least likely you know, places you would see this kind of broad-based uh, nonviolent uh, uprising. But they were able to, to um, form an impressive degree of unity among the various uh, tribal, regional, sectarian, ideological groups, um, and mass marches, sit-ins, uh, many other forms of civil resistance, and, and leaders of prominent tribal coalitions, uh, as well as the Houthis, who are now, you know, have since uh, you know uh, taken over large parts of the country, they publicly supported the 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 uh, popular insurrection, and 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 there are amazing scenes of these, and um, with one provincial town, these uh, tribesmen coming in on their horses with their um, you know Pancho Villa style, style bandilleros and their automatic weapons and throwing them down, saying "Snia, uh, Snia," and joining the um, peaceful, peaceful, and, and joining the uh, nonviolent protests. Um, the um, and 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 this and they, and they they kept the nonviolent. You know, there are few exceptions, uh, the, um, but uh, in, in general, they kept the nonviolent discipline. Even the government and snipers were you know, were, 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 were were killed hundreds of uh, unarmed protesters. And um, but unfortunately, the uh, you know the U.S. US government and other, other Western governments and were more concerned about maintaining stability because of the Al Qaeda presence. Uh, Robert Gates, you know. You know he was, he was Secretary of Defense at the time, really pushed the Obama administration to keep uh, supporting Salah, ambassador, US, former U.S. ambassador to Yemen, said, oh, you know, for right now he's our guy, you know, we never really thought of a scenario without him. And so, um, but, but we also realized the status quo couldn't prevail, so the United States and Saudi Arabia, joined by the other GCC countries, presented a plan where Salah would step down uh, but he and other top officials in the regime would be granted immunity uh, from prosecution, you know, um, for the civilian deaths they ordered, and there'd be a plebiscite held within 60 days would transfer power to Salah's uh, vice president, uh, Major General Abdul Mansohadi. And of course, pro democracy movement was outraged by this. Um, you know, they they um, um, uh, you know they, they 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 formed meanwhile had formed an opposition national council, which they hoped would be a provisional government. That would lead to multi-party elections. It consisted of 143 members, representing a broad coalition of protest leaders, tribal sheikhs, South Yemen separatists, opposition military commanders, former members of the governing party, and 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 even even from the Houthi, Houthi militia, you know, representing the Zaidi minority in the north. Uh, but the Saudis, the U.S. government, you know, kept saying, "Oh no, you, we need to transfer power to the vice president." and and um, uh, they um, and, and and Obama in February 2002, you know, formally endorsed Hadi, um, and 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 he set up this plebiscite. He became president. Obama bragged that this was a, a model for how peaceful transition in the Middle East can occur. But uh, this really uh, the marginalization of Yemeni civil society, which has struggled for so many months, not violently for democracy. I and mean, this is this is this is seen as as, as a betrayal, and. Um, and 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 the, the government was 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 corrupt. They were um, you know, not not me. Uh, I mean, failed in their promises of opening up society more, leading to more discontent. And the uh, Houthis then took up arms. And given the lack of legitimacy of the um, uh, Hadi regime, combined with the fact that Saleh, you know, thanks to this deal, was back in the in the, in the government and or back in the country, and some of his people were end up supporting the the Houthis, ironically. Um, the, the Houthis ended up taking over you know, much of the country, and um, then the um, which then led to the Saudi intervention, and we really have the um, uh, the, the tragedy uh, that we we, 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 we we see going on on there. So 
I use Yemen as an example because, you know, it's not a matter of nonviolence didn't work, and it wasn't even the Yemeni's fault. It was foreign intrigues, unfortunately, including our government, <laughs> that prevented uh, the, the, uh, the, the victory of the, of the pro-democracy uh, um, pro forces. Now, it would be too simplistic to say the U.S. is it's all of America's fault or anything like that. No, it's, it's, Yemen's a much more complicated place than that. But I also want to challenge this idea that, oh, you know, oh, Arabs aren't capable of democracy or in the kind of uh, excuses we've been, we've been seeing. Interestingly, just a little footnote, that um, despite all the violence and bloodshed, Taiz, which is Yemen's third largest city, has maintained an independent, free, democratic governance because when the Houthis are marching south from Sana'a toward, towards Aden, you know, Taiz is right there on the way, and, you know, hundreds, uh, th tens of thousands of people came out, surrounded the city, nonviolent, says, no, you, you, you know, you shall not pass. You, we're not going to let you guys take over. And the, 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 the Houthis you know, decided they could not shoot into, uh, they couldn't get away with it, just massacring people, and they just bypassed Taiz and, <laughs> and continued south. Uh, and similarly, uh, at the uh, you know, university in, 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 um, in, in Sana'a and other places where the Houthis took over, student strikes and others you know, forced them to, to withdraw. So, and, and there's, there's even a case where, as you know, with the Saudis coming in and everything, uh, Al-Qaeda's had a resurgence. They've actually seized a number of towns. Um, I, I'm not making this up, but I actually have, have the video footage that uh, a few weeks ago, Friday after prayers, Thousand, uh, thousand people came out and they went to the Al Qaeda headquarters, and 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 and, uh, and and basically said, you know, we're we're not we're not accepting your rule anymore. So you know, who who who'd, who'd have thought, you know, against nonviolence against Al Qaeda? You know, I mean, even I'm skeptical of that idea. <laughs> but uh, um, so so even the tragedy there, it, it, it's um, um you know, there 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 there's still some some signs uh, signs of, of hope. Um, Syria. Let me talk about Syria briefly. Um, Again, I don't think it's a matter of nonviolence not working or nonviolence not work against somebody like Assad. Um, the uh, 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 again, it, I think the problem is, is that uh, you know um, uh, Assad is um, particularly. Um, I mean, the Shah killed more civilians than, than in, the, in the initial you know, period than than than, uh, uh, than um, during the early early phase of the of the uh, 78, 79 revolution. Then Assad did more people died in South Africa in that struggle. So it's not just a matter of how many people civilians die. Um, I think the main, there are a couple of main pro problems with, with, with Assad. Now, first of all, it was more than just Assad. In many ways, it, it, it's not uh, unlike uh, uh, Salah, Mubarak, Gaddafi, uh, Ben Ali, which are more or less one-man rule. Uh, Syria is a little more of an oligarchy. Uh, the Ba'ath Party has you know, been ruling for, for decades. You know, they, they're, 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 you know, through, you know, they're, 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 they infiltrate every part of society. The military is very, very strong. A lot of people have family in the military. Um, the crony capitalist class, which is actually mostly Sunni, <laughs> benefits a lot from the regime. Um, the uh, and 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 of course you have the um, uh, the uh, um, not just the Alawites, but the Christians, Druze, Shias, you know, who you believe a secular government, you know, even a corrupt authoritarian one, you know, might be better. So what I'm saying is that that unlike the other dictators that are toppled more quickly, um, the Assad regime has social base. Uh, minority, but still, you know, as much as a third or so, which is, again, uh, uh, several times that of Gaddafi or, and, and some of the others. So whatever method of struggle you use, you know, whether violent or nonviolent, um, you know, Syria is going to be a tougher, tougher nut to crack. Um, also, you know, Syria's civil society in Syria was weaker, um, much weaker than you, you found, found in, in Egypt and Tunisia, uh, for, for example. Um, and whereas the folks in Egypt, in particular, you know, have been organizing and you know, um, reading Jean Sharp and um, you know, you know, studying this kind of kind of stuff for for, for years, and the, the, what was what happened in Syria was largely spontaneous. And so, for a number of reasons, it was uh, it was um, it was it was again it, it was going to be more more challenging. And again, I think the the um, uh, the fact that they did yeah you know, uh, you know for, uh, um, focus more on street demonstrations, which were you know. Um, Particularly problematic, and, and and you know, frankly, I think if they 
they, they, they again kind of tactically retreated and, and prepared for maybe in the, for the long term. In fact, in fact, the general strikes they had were remarkably effective. Like eighty percent of um, you know, Aleppo homes, Hama, you know, shut down. I mean, they, I think there, could, there was potential there, but again, you know, with, with the armed struggle, uh, you know, becoming pr predominant, it became much much harder. Because again, originally the armed struggle was justified saying, oh, we're going to the Free Syrian Army will protect the nonviolent demonstrators from the regime. But of course, it gave the regime an excuse to to, uh, you know, to, to inflict even even greater um, and greater horror. Uh, what happened in Egypt? Um, that's the saddest, I think, because I think in many ways it had the most potential. Um, I think it was an example that that off, that that uh, you know that that often you know the people who organize these protests are often the younger um, uh, uh, and, and le less experienced organizers. And so when you have um, groups like the Muslim Brotherhood, kind of waiting in the wings, who've been around for decades, you know, who, despite being officially a band, were more or less the loyal opposition <laughs> to Mubarak, you know, and had this kind of network of social service agencies and things like that, that they were more able to, to bring their gap. In certain ways, ironically, the, the Egyptian revolution was successful too quickly. Um, and they, then, there, there, then there are the particularities of the elect, uh, presidential election where it's kind of like the French system where the top two vote-getting parties run off against each other. So the majority of votes in the presidential election went to the more moderate, left-leaning, secular, democratic uh, candidates. But the, 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 the one, two, two that got the biggest votes were the candidate of the Muslim Brotherhood and the candidate of the military, which was you know, like the worst possible <laughs> outcome in the views of most Egyptians. And they ended up you know, voting for the, the, the Muslim Brotherhood candidate as the uh, Morsi is the uh, lesser evil, and of course, then and he ended up alienating, you know, you know so much of the, the population, and it gave the military opening that when people rose up to, to take over, and, and um, by this time, the chaos and that kind of thing had, had led a lot of people to actually welcome a more you know, secular authoritarianism.